Spider-Man. Today is the fourth Sunday of the Holy Fifty. Happy Mother's Day to all who are mothers, future mothers, grandmothers. Today, we continue the theme of the resurrected life. And the church today gives us the theme of being a light to the world. And so the essence of the teachings in these passages is that God is light, who enlightens our minds, our hearts, our souls, our bodies. And this light dispels the darkness of sin in our life. In order to receive the divine light, we must hear the word of God, we must repent of our sins, and we must follow his commands. A lot of times, many people don't want to walk in light. There's this spiritual darkness, which is sin and confusion, that people flock towards. Our Lord says, he who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. Our Lord says, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. In other words, oftentimes we choose to close our eyes to God. We choose to close our eyes to God's words and his power and his love. And sometimes we think that he doesn't have the power or even the desire to help me. Like my life is one thing which is separate from the life of church. And I think this is walking in darkness. Our minds sometimes are blinded by the gods of this age, the different idols that we flock towards. Maybe it's a culture, maybe it's a, a popular group, maybe it's my desires, maybe it's my ego, my pride. And so we see that without God, the world is full of darkness and with many different types of darkness overwhelming people. And so the coming of Christ changes this world of darkness and brings light and life. I want to highlight several aspects of darkness which threatens all of us. And we want to see how God's divine light can dispel every type of darkness. Our Christian faith teaches that God is light and he brings his divine light into a dark world of sin and death. And for those who choose to live in that light, who choose to be filled with divine light, St. Paul says, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the world, in, in the Lord. Walk as children of light, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. This is in Ephesians chapter 5. And so we are children of light. And we are called to walk each and every day with that light. This theme of light and darkness. We see this imagery described heavily in the, in the Gospels. The divine light has come into the world through the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we also remember the Feast of Epiphany, which celebrates how God enlightened the world by revealing himself as Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so God's light shines in the darkness of the world to chase away the shadows of darkness. So let's see and let's look at several areas of darkness that God can dispel if we choose. I think the first one is the darkness of ignorance. We know that all types of education and knowledge open our minds uh, to understand the world and our reality in different ways. But I think the greatest ignorance that one can experience is that of not knowing the one who created us, not knowing God. And unfortunately, too many people today in our society are growing up with this secular perspective that pushes God out of the worldview. They don't know or, and I would even argue, they don't want to know about the one who created us. Why he created us. What is our purpose? And so the darkness of atheism, of denying or, or simply not knowing God, 
is a terrible ignorance. It is a worldview where we choose to live without connecting to the source of the true of the true life and love and light. In the person of Christ, we can know our Creator. In Christ, we see God as a human being, and we learn about the true potential of maximizing what it means to be a human being. I pray that each one of us, even though we come to the church regularly, we strive to grow more in our knowledge of who Christ really is. It's not enough to know about him. It's to know him. We need to read the scripture. We need to strive to learn about the Orthodox Christian faith better. We need to discover who God truly is. Because then we learn who we truly are. So this divine knowledge will lead us out of the ignorance of, of, dark, of ignorance. The second one, the ignorance of God can lead to a different type of darkness. It's been said, if God doesn't exist, then everything is permitted. If there is no God, then there are no rules to live by, no moral law we must follow. We can do whatever we want. So the darkness of ignorance can lead to the darkness of sin and evil. If we don't know God, then we won't know what God expects from us. When we push God out of our lives, then we deaden the conscience. We begin to create our own standard, our own standard of right and wrong, of what good and evil is. And eventually, we create a standard that justifies whatever we want. Our lives become egocentric. When C.S. Lewis was an atheist, he talked about not wanting any great interfere in his life. How profound. As long as he didn't believe in God or know anything about God, then he could do whatever he wanted. And this leads to the darkness of sin and evil. We create our own right and wrong. And this egocentric darkness can lead to the darkness of hatred, the third type. The darkness of hatred. We hate others because we don't understand them as people created in the image of God. When one does something that displeases me or hurts me, we hold on to bitterness and resentment towards them. Because the darkness of our souls have been blighted to the virtues of mercy and grace and forgiveness. Hatred leads to bitterness. Hatred leads to resentment. And so God's light radically changes this dark perspective. We learn the teachings of Christ. We learn to love our enemies. We learn to turn the other cheek. We learn to do good to those who mistreat you. We learn to forgive seven times 70. We learn to become perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So these radical teachings of Christ chase away the darkness of our egocentric hatred away. Of course, it's hard to forgive when someone has truly hurt us. It's hard to love someone who completely mistreats us or even hates us. It's hard to turn the other cheek when someone isn't repentant. But God never tells us to do these kind of things on our own. What is impossible for man is possible for God. So the Lord promises to shine his light into our darkened souls and his light will show us the way to love. His light shows us how to forgive, how to treat others, even our enemies, with kindness and goodness. The light of God enlightens our path and leads us to the kingdom of heaven, which is here and now. Ultimately, the greatest darkness that we face in the world is the final darkness, the darkness of death. The mystery of death encompasses all of us. We remember that 
Death can come at any age, and for many, we fear this final darkness. It's full of mystery. For one who doesn't believe in God, death is the end of everything. And frankly, it's a horrible ending. But for those who know Christ, light has dawned in the regions of death. We no longer are afraid of death because we know it's not the end. Christ has conquered death and he has opened up the gates of eternal paradise. His divine light has shone forth in the darkest regions of, of death and bursts forth new life. So even this most fearful end of our earthly life becomes the beginning of this new eternal life with Christ. Light versus darkness. We all have a choice to make in this life. Do we want to live under the light of Christ and allow his light to transform our entire perspective on living? Or do we choose to ignore this light and allow darkness of the world to engulf us and lead us to despair? Our Lord says, a little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. We must be filled with the light of Christ in order for us to shine. And this light is found in daily prayer. This light is found in scripture. This light is found in in regular worship and reception of the Eucharist. This is where it begins. Our Lord spoke about light many times. He quotes Isaiah. He says, The people who sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them who sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has sprung forth. Matthew chapter 4. In the gospel, our Lord tells us, You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that, you, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. St. Paul basically says the same thing in Ephesians chapter 5. Once you were in darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. If there is darkness in the world, it begins with me. If there is light in the world, it begins and must begin with me. It doesn't begin with some government. Uh, agency or some nonprofit organization it begins with Christ because but the light of Christ must be magnified through me through, through my soul through my heart through my mind through my strength through my thoughts my words my actions i must become a living candle of the light of Christ i want to share with you some words of st john chrysostom it's uh it's tough. Let's, let's hear it. This is from St. John Chrysostom. Christ left us on earth in order that we should become like beacons of light and teachers unto others, that we might act like leaven and move among the people like angels, be adults to children and spiritual persons to animal persons in order to win them over, and that we may be like seed and bear abundant fruit. There would be no need for sermons if our lives were shining. There would be no needs for words if we bore witness with our deeds. There would be no unbelievers if we were true Christians. Today, we have to think about what light are we radiating from our lives and how are we influencing our neighbors, our family members. It's a call for us to imitate the saints, those who are past, those who are present, the saints of today, who offer a, the bright light of God's love and drew people closer to that source of love, of love who is God himself. I think it's important also today that we say a few words about Mother's Day. Today, children have an opportunity to remember and honor their mother. In our tradition, we encounter the very church as our mother, who gives birth to us 
and regenerates us in Christ, leading to salvation. In the Gospel lesson, our Lord says, not only is he the light of the world, but Christ tells his followers, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. What an incredible privilege and responsibility we each have. Each one of us is a small light of God, and God expects us to shine our light and his light through us. In many ways, mothers reflect this Christian spirit that we're reminded of today. The idea of bringing light to the world. This is the ideal that we should all strive for in our lives. This life of unconditional love. This life of sacrificial service. This life of this foundation of faith. Many saints throughout the centuries attribute their initial thirst for God and the foundation of their faith to their mothers. Christian motherhood never limits herself. Christian motherhood is sacrificial, love. The blessings and the spirit of motherhood come from God himself. God's love knows no bounds. And as the love of a true Christian mother knows no limits. So Christian motherhood has three central pillars. Unconditional love, unconquerable hope, and this undying faith. How many of our own mothers have instilled these gifts of faith and hope and love in each one of us. No matter what the children do or how far they stray from the straight and narrow path, the mother and the church continue to pray for them, to love them, never lose hope for them, always place their faith in them. How many of our mothers realize that this is the greatest legacy that you can leave your kids? Faith, hope, and love. Same with the church. The dreams of a mother and the dream of the church is always to help her child to reach their potential in God. Today, let us go home thinking about what light we are radiating from our lives and how we are influencing each other. On this Mother's Day, let us lift up and honor all of our mothers who have been a light in our lives. Christ is risen, truly he is risen, and glory be to God forever. Amen.